Good afternoon from the Alton Towers Resort, where it's time for our annual Scarefest construction update. The event kicks off in just five days' time, this Saturday, the 7th of October 2023. The event will run this weekend, and then every day from the 13th through until the 31st of October. And of course, we're going to be here over the weekend, bringing you all the latest updates on our social media pages, and of course, a vlog with reviews from all of the different Scare experiences on offer. Of course, what we love about Scarefest is the fact the park's open until nine o'clock at night, so it means enjoying rides in the dark, capturing the nighttime atmosphere of the park, and I love Alton Towers at night. Unfortunately, we don't often get it at night other than this time of year, so it's always nice to make the most of Scarefest and uh, get the rides in the dark. And the good thing about the event this year, there's some new offerings uh, which I am very pleased about, uh, and of course, I'll talk all about that throughout this video. Let's go and get inside the park. Really quiet off peak Monday today here at the Alton Towers Resort. And yeah, no Charlotte today. She's at home preparing the house for Halloween. So stay tuned for more house updates over on our second channel, The Sandbrook Adventures. Now Alton Towers Oktoberfest only came to an end yesterday. And as you can see, they're in the process of transforming the lawns from Oktoberfest into Scarefest. And yeah, we didn't actually get a chance to come and film Oktoberfest. We were gonna come over the weekend uh, because it's a brilliant event. However, the weather was absolutely atrocious. And normally we'd be here for the start of the event, which is at the start of September. Uh, but because we went on our Florida trip a bit earlier this year, uh, we weren't actually here for the start of the event. So yeah, we've not actually filmed the vlog and covered it. However, I know a lot of people that came to Oktoberfest this year and said that it was a fantastic event. Um, yeah, as you can see, they're in the process now of transforming it into the Scarefest offering i'm sure we're going to see some food booths down here the fire pits the stage will all be rebranded and we'll see lots of spooky entertainment on there as always now once again the area will transform into the freaky fun zone and yeah that'll mean it's the place to be for all your scarefest characters uh, i do like the character shows hopefully they've freshened them up a little bit for this year uh, but still they are great for families we really enjoyed simbin last year which is a live vocal show so hopefully we'll have something similar to that this year as well and also the alton ancestors are back and yeah as much as they do their shows up on tower street on a morning in the afternoon they did a performance on the stage which was brilliant with all the lighting and smoke effects so yeah hopefully we're going to see something similar to that um, but yeah in a few days time this will look very different as part of the freaky fun zone now something that Scarefest has really lacked over these past few years are free scare zones and I'm really pleased that they're bringing back a free scare zone to the event this year. As much as I would have liked to have seen at least a couple like we've had in the past, I'm so happy we've got at least one this year um, for the event and that's going to be known as Burial Grounds. It's going to be located by Wickerman. So let's go and have a look. Just a 10 minute wait for Wickerman this afternoon. Not too bad at all. September, brilliant time to come and visit Alton Towers. Really hoping to get the flame effects sorted out on Wicker Man. They've not been working for many months to the start of the year. So yeah, let's hope that we're going to see them back on for Scarefest because it's always one of the highlights during the events. Now, when Burial Grounds was first announced, a lot of people, including myself, thought, oh, maybe it's going to be out the front of the ride. However, it's actually going to be just around here to the side. And yeah, you can see some signage has started to be installed just over here. And yeah, a lot of construction taking place behind these trees. So if you remember, back to goal, when I was filming the updates throughout 2017, uh, building Wicker Man, uh, there was a, a pathway down here at the side because the Katanga Canyon pathway was closed due to the construction. It's actually gonna be down that pathway that's not been used since. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. But as you can see, these wooden posts have gone in. Well, it looks to be for some signage. You've also got some lighting just down there as well. So I reckon we're gonna see that kind of backlit from down here. We've got some more speakers that have gone in. And yeah, there's some uh, like gas canisters down there as well. Maybe some flame effects possibly, I'm not too sure. Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, you can see this post has gone in, active construction work taking place. So we'll go around the corner and see what we can see from Haunted Hollow. And here's a look at that setup. And yeah, as you can see, we've got all this camo netting, all the fences that have gone into place down there, some signage, some speakers. Is that part of drain pipe down there as well? Some sandbags and a few other bits around. And as you can see, quite a lot of female, it looks like down the back just there all the camo net and we can see some signs chosen just on there of course all part of the wicker man story with the bjorn and yeah so you can see that it kind of looks like it spans further up and what we can see down here is a pipe and i reckon we're going to see a smoke machine kind of attached into that at the side but similar effect to what we've got in the queue line for the curse at alton manor you can just make out a tent just up that way as well if i zoom in a little bit for you and some wicker fencing that's gone into place. So yeah, maybe that's gonna be the entrance down by Wicker Man. And then you'll exit up at the top 
or are you going to be able to go in both ways? I'm not too sure, but obviously when Alton Towers have done scare zones in the past, they've tried doing a few different things. Um, some way you just kind of free flow walk through them, like the Freak Show one a few years ago. Uh, and then along with that, they've also done ones like the Zombie Scare Zone, where you kind of walk through uh, and they batch you to go through. It does say free flowing on the website, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how it works, because it's quite a tight pathway. I think this could end up being a one-way path. But still very exciting and it's going to be free of charge for the event. Just walking a bit further down Haunted Hollow and yeah this pipe that I believe is for a fog effect expands all the way down here too so it might create quite a nice ambience down here in Haunted Hollow. Who remembers Haunted Hollow Live? That was great. Yeah it's just nice to have something else new for the event this year. Here we go we can see some more fencing over at the back just there too kind of near to the Skyride supports. You know, like you're going to kind of spam around this way or there's going to be some actors at the side. Interested to see how this is going to be. I'm just going to have a look around the corner now and just see if we can see anything from the uh, pathway underneath Wicker Man. That's if it's still open. It could be closed now. And you can just see a little bit more through the trees here. Yeah, all the fencing that there is. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the welcoming, that scare attraction they had a few years ago. You've got kind of all the cloths with all the writing on there as well from the Bjornen. Now it's not just the wooden fence in there. You've also got like a big iron gate so yeah, really fascinating. Can't wait to see how that's going to look come Saturday. Still quite a lot of work to be done though down there, as we can see. Uh, but yeah, this pathway underneath Wickerman is actually open still. So we'll have a little look around here and see what we can see. So this new fence has been installed all the way down here along the side. And yeah, to put it into perspective where we are, Haunted Hollow and where that pipeway is, is kind of just down that way. And yeah, from here, we can see some more theming, some sort of wooden structure that's gone into place. Maybe that's for an actor to go inside there possibly. You've got to think these scare zones and scare mazes, they all look better at night. So yeah, obviously in the daytime, it's quite hard to get a feel for what it's actually going to be like. But yeah, you can see all that wooden structure that's kind of gone into place. So yeah, I think this is probably going to be the exit just down here, right next to Wicker Man itself. And then you'll probably have to walk straight down that way, of course, back to Katanga Canyon and Mutiny Bay, or take a right just here behind me. And yeah, that heads, of course, down to the Curse of Alton Manor. Yeah, this is still a gate, so I'm, I'm pretty certain this will be the exit. The fact there's no, like, a big framework for signage here certainly makes me think you're going to enter the other way. And also, with it being kind of Wicker Man themed, of course, um, then, yeah, I think you're going to enter down by Wicker Man itself. Really interesting, though. Looking good. Oh, lovely. Here comes the rain. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really impressed with what we're seeing there from Burial Grounds. Very intrigued to see how it's going to be come Saturday. And, uh, yeah, it's just nice to have something else at the event that is free. Wicker Man always looks the part at night anyway. So I think this will really add to the atmosphere of the area. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to it. I love scare zones. Uh, it's always one of my favourite parts of these events. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what we can expect from Burial Grounds come Saturday. Quite a wet afternoon now here at Alton Towers, but we'll continue on having a walk around. And of course, bring you all those Scarefest updates. Lighting really adds to the atmosphere of the park at night. And as much as Garden Lights Walk Whispering Souls isn't back this year, they have put some lighting down here at the entrance to the gardens just to kind of light all these trees up. Yeah, it's a shame they didn't bring back the Garden Light Walk because it was fantastic. We really liked it. It wasn't an actor led experience. You just kind of strolled down there whenever you wanted to um, in an evening, of course. And it was great. Really enjoyed it. Um, everything all lit up at night it was really pretty some good soundtracks down there there was projections um yeah it's not come back uh, which is a real shame because it did add something else to the event uh, but at least we have got a scare zone to kind of replace it in a way for this year um yeah there is all the lighting up here at the top so it'd be nice maybe if they could light up the statue and a few other trees around the top here maybe just so you can see them from up here on the pathway um but yeah no garden light walk this year Oh, don't the towers look beautiful as always? And of course, just had an amazing time over in Florida. But yeah, there's nothing still like seeing the beautiful towers ruins here at Alton Towers. Cannot wait to see them lit up as always for Scarefest this weekend. It's just such a shame uh, that we've not been able to walk through the towers all throughout 2023. Let's hope that changes more next year. Well, you know, Scarefest is just around the corner. When you hear this sound, the generators are back again. And yeah, the main reason they have these temporary lights is because Alton Towers doesn't really have much permanent lighting at all. And what they do have um, isn't great. I mean, really, when they're refurbishing areas and rides, in my opinion, they should spend the money uh, on putting that permanent lighting in because it had saved so much in the long term uh, when they bring in these generators. Uh, but still, the back, they're ugly, they're not great, they sound horrible. Um, but yeah, they do the job, I guess. Uh, they have put a few of these festoon lights in. And a few more places as well uh, which is better than having the generators however uh, they are still generator powered 
as you can see down there. It's a shame they couldn't just get them up, hooked up to the mains down here at Alton Towers. But yeah, at least they've put a few more of these in. It just kind of um, add a bit more to the atmosphere, like a pathway down here. Because obviously before, you'd have to have generators all the way down. So yeah, there is just the one at the top. But ideally, I still find this quite a temporary solution. I think they need to be installed in permanent lights. Off to the right then here is Darkest Depths. So yeah, this is one of three scare mazes at the event this year. Because of course, we've got the three scare mazes, the audio experience and the new escape room as well. Um, but yeah, Darkest Depths back again. Really good attraction. Um, I do enjoy the theming of this. The storyline's great. I'm hoping we see a few updated scenes in here just to keep it fresh. We have the experience starts in the Smuggler's Inn just here uh, where you're told the story of the Kraken and the mutiny. Uh, and then you make your way, of course, uh, into shipping containers and that big building there that used to be the parade float building back in in the olden days of Alton Towers. And yeah, it's a good attraction. So yeah, hopefully um, it's gonna be just as good as it always has been, maybe with some new updated and refreshed scenes. But yeah, you can see they've still got a bit of work to do here. Yeah, to be honest, this literally looks like they've just took the fence down and not done anything yet because this is one of the attractions that's just left set up um, all throughout the year and they just put this fence up to uh, cover it. But uh, yeah, as you can see, there's uh, quite a lot of work to do. It looks very dirty down there. In fact, I don't really think they've done anything on the exterior, so I highly doubt they've done anything new inside. All these barrels down here are for the queue line for Darkest Depths as well. So yeah, obviously that's gonna kind of be all the way down here at the side with the entrance sign probably going down here on the grass again. And yeah, that's the thing, as much as we've got some new things for Scarefest this year, it's not quite the big overhaul that the event needed. However, we'll see what happens on Saturday. Uh, I am looking forward to it, because it is a great time of the year here at Alton Towers. Um, it used to be an absolutely amazing event. I feel like they've kind of really fell behind with it now. It has become quite stale, or stale fest as we called it last year, but at least there is some new bits for this year, so we can't fully judge it, of course, until we've seen um, the event for itself on Saturday. But yeah, we're going to make our way up this way and take a left now to go and talk about the family attraction that they've got for the events and that's located up towards the dungeon. Look how empty Alton Towers is today, like it's a brilliant day for coming. Um, but yeah, making our way then down here to Trick or Treat Town. And yeah, this is the family walkthrough attraction and it is really nicely themed. It's back for a third year. And yeah, with this, there's some really nice set pieces. It's quite expensive and of course, we'll go through all the prices uh, this Saturday in our vlog from the opening because of course, the prices have gone up even more for this year. Um, but yeah, I do quite like this attraction. Uh, however, is it in the right place? I mean, it's in the side um, of where the Alton Towers dungeon is. I do feel like it'd be in a better location somewhere else however it's back for this year let's have a look at the setup in the next few days we'll see all the signage coming down here you've got the wooden posts ready to go and yeah they have like a countdown to halloween which is quite nice all lighting around here too and yeah it always looks the part and yeah the queue line probably spanned down the side just here um, like it did previously and yeah you've got the exterior all here as well the little pumpkins in the grass down there and yeah like the haunted house all along the side and yeah the actual entrance to the attraction just there at the side. But yeah, still quite a lot of setup to do here on the exterior with the queue line and the lighting and all the signage. Uh, but that's the thing, it's quite a turnover for them um, from Oktoberfest into Scarefest. It is only five days. So yeah, I'm sure we'll see even more happening here in the next few days. But yeah, again, this is all set up throughout the year. It's in the former lift area of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the ride. Uh, if you remember that attraction, just in the side of the dungeon just over there. And on that walkway down towards the Towers Ruins, some more lighting. It's gone into place around here as well to light up all the trees. See, I'm sure that'll look really pretty. So I've made my way now up here into the beautiful Her Ladyship's Gardens. And once again, this will be the queue line just here for the attic terror of the towers. It's back again. I do feel like, you know, it's had its time now, this. Another refresh is needed. I still like the idea of keeping the terror of the towers name. Of course, it's been a part of Alton Towers Halloween history for many years, but I feel like updating the storyline would have been great for this year. Uh, but still, they haven't done. I would have liked to have seen them uh, kind of combine the stories between this and also the curse at Alton Manor, especially with this feature in dolls and doll houses. Uh, I thought it would happen to be honest, but it hasn't done. Uh, I think they could have really gone into the backstory of Emily Alton, her family, uh, the curse at Alton Manor, and created a really nice new version of Terror of the Towers with that, uh, that could last again for a few years. But sadly, they haven't done that. But uh, yeah, let's have a little look at what we can see here from the outside. And with this attraction being located within the towers itself, not really much to see from the outside. Um, but yeah, all the queue line is set up around here as well. Uh, but other than that, everything of course is hidden inside. Well, we'll have a little look just up here at the conservatories. I'm surprised this area hasn't all been blocked off yet, actually. I mean, there is a fence just up there, but yeah, as you can see, it's just blocking access into the conservatory, but not this area here. So we'll have a little look 
at what we can see. But yeah, I do love having mazes inside the towers. However, I just don't like how the left set up all year because as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we've not been able to actually explore around the towers all throughout 2023, which is really sad considering that's the history um, of this place. It really is. And yeah, that is not original. That's put in um, just, of course, for Scarefest. And yeah, you've got like the fake kind of fountain. They don't fill it with water or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that just goes there in the middle. I think a lot of people might think now, oh, you know, it's an original feature. Well, no, it does just come in for Scarefest. Uh, and you can see they put a bin in there and yeah, you'll just queue up um, around the side just here. And yeah, you've actually got the lighting um, installed around the corner in there. I don't think you can see it from this angle. Oh, no, you can. There's a spotlight up there. What's interesting is it's turned off now, but them spotlights have been on all throughout the year when I've come up here to check if the towers were back open. Literally, and the amount of electricity they've wasted just having them lights on um, all throughout the year is crazy. Um, but yeah, it's back for this year. Of course, the attic, it starts downstairs, then you make your way up some stairs and it's all round um, in this top section of the towers ruins themselves but yeah fingers crossed next year we're actually going to be able to walk back through the towers again or at least i hope so hopefully the weather's going to be better for saturday it's certainly looking like it is which i'm pleased about because it's horrible today i'm really hoping that we see the return of the projections in the window for this year um yeah we didn't have those last year it was a week event last year so fingers crossed uh, we're going to be seeing uh, it being slightly better even though it's not quite the refresh that we all wanted well now it's time for the updates that I definitely didn't think I'd be talking about again this year but here we are, welcome to Scarefest 2023, Oldville Mine Tours is back for this year's event. It's been here for eight years now. We first saw this scare maze in the towers in the same location um, from 2016. And so uh, yeah, it's kept coming back every year. It's a brilliant maze, but it was definitely time for this to go. Now, Alton Towers are claiming that it's new for 2023 because they've put a tagline on the end saying Tiny's Revenge. However, I'm interested to see just how much has changed inside there. We've not seen inside yet other than the promotional video they released a few days ago. It didn't look massively different. I feel like they've probably cheaped out on it but we'll see what happens it was time for it to go but it is back for this year so we'll head around the corner and see what we can see from Oldville Mine Tours now this is another scare maze within the towers that's left set up all throughout the year and that's part of the problem as to why the towers ruins haven't been open throughout this year and in the past few years it's been very limited Scarefest setup always used to start the first of September it was like that for many years you could access the towers from the start of the season through until the end of August and um, yeah this year they've been closed throughout the whole of the season which has been really sad actually uh, I know quite a lot of people who've come to the park this year who wanted to walk around the towers and what got me most was some American friends of mine came over first time at Alton Towers I told them all about the history and the fact that you've got this beautiful building and they didn't get to walk around and they left quite disappointed and they were most excited for of course walking around the towers and getting on the smiler so yeah I'm really hoping next year we see um, you know them back open again if that means taking the mazes out of the towers which there's rumors of um, then yeah uh, I'm all for that in my opinion yeah I've just seen some construction happening down there actually a couple of workers about with five days to go and yeah, as you can see, we've got some more kind of metal fence in this year. Block it in, in here at the side. It looks like maybe they've extended it outside a little bit of the towers. Possibly a bit of a longer ending maybe down there. Like I say, I can't wait to see how much has actually changed from the legend of the skin snatchers to Tiny's Revenge. Well, from the exterior here, it looks like the same old, same old. You've got the speakers just up here. You've got the same sort of queue line fencing. I'm sure the sign will be attached here on the side. Yeah, I'm really intrigued to see what they've done on the inside of this to claim that it's new. In my opinion, the wording would have been better to saying refreshed or new scenes for 2023. Uh, but actually saying new, really, people are gonna be expecting a lot of change in there. Now these look like they're new though, they've been uh, replaced. Same sort of setup as the old ones, but yeah, they're definitely new ones on there. They've not got that rusted up effect, have they, like the other ones? Cabling down there. And yeah, considering, you know, the scare maze are left set up, throughout the whole of the year. They leave it quite last minute really during all those. Now, just before you enter the tunnel that leads down to the towers itself, you've actually got some new signage just over there. And yeah, it says closed by order of the sheriff. Kind of the updated storyline. So yeah, that's quite promising to see. Hopefully we're gonna see some new props inside just like that one. But still, I think to have an attraction for eight years is pretty crazy. I mean, we've never seen a Scarefest attraction last that long before. Um, surely they've got enough creative ideas, especially with all the amazing stories they've got here at Alton Towers, uh, to come up with something new. I'm guessing it's probably budget reasons, but let's hope uh, that we see another replacement um, for this next year. I really hope so. We can't have it for a ninth year. 
Now here's one that we definitely didn't think we'd be coming back for Scarefest this year, but here it is, set up is underway for the invitation. So this was the new audio experience that launched at the event last year. And in our opinion, it was the worst Scarefest attraction we've had in all the years uh, this event has been running. Never missed a Scarefest with it being the local park. It was absolutely terrible in our opinion. The best part of it was the queue line. Um, but still, we have seen a few updates to the exterior for this year. And there's rumors that we're gonna have seen some changes inside. So I really do hope so. It needed completely redoing um, in my opinion. But as you can see, we've got this new brick wall that looks quite nice actually on the exterior over here. However, hopefully we're going to see a lot of changes over on the inside because yeah, it was pretty terrible last year. I do appreciate how they've tried to make it look prettier though from the outside with that new kind of fake brick wall that they've put in. However, yeah, they could have at least extended it down this side to cover the containers. Because yeah, you've got that nice bit of theming on the side that you can clearly just see here how it's a shipping container. Uh, and yeah, literally an audio experience. You went in, put your headphones on, and that was pretty much it. You came out afterwards. Uh, and yeah, we loved at Scarefest last year, just standing at the exit, just watching people's reactions. Um, because there was a few people that enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, in general, it didn't go down that well. Yeah, they've moved the golf just off to the side round here too. And yeah, I imagine you were going on this side again. Queue line was really nice and atmospheric. It's like a cemetery all set up down by the lake. Yeah, a little walk around here to see what we can see. Oh yeah, all that theming's back again. As we can see, queue lines all in place, the tombstones. And yeah, all that theming was really good on the exterior. So it's nice to see they've done a bit more at the exit, but hopefully more inside. There's rumours that we're going to see um, some other changes in there. So I really hope so. Oh, the rain stopped now, which is quite nice, as we make our way to talk about the final attraction for Scarefest this year, and that is Daz Games Panic. It's going to be located, just behind me actually, close to Spinball Wizard, um, over in the corporate hospitality suite. This has been under construction for a few weeks now, which is promising, but hopefully there's going to be a lot of really nice set pieces to enjoy in there. However, we'll go over and see what we can see from the outside. Just notice some more festoon lights that have gone into place between Spinball Wizard and also X Sector 2. So yeah, much better than having the generators, even though some permanent lighting would be better in the long term. They've also put some little spotlights just on the top just there as well. I wouldn't really call that permanent lighting, but it is something and it will help add to the atmosphere down this pathway. And yeah, as we can see, here's a look at the setup for Daz Games Panic. You've got this massive fence all the way around, so we're probably not going to see much from the outside other than around the corner maybe by Spinball Wizard. I can see some purple lights on just over here though. Let's have a bit of a zoom in. Now Alton Towers are claiming this is a mix between an escape room and a scare maze. So yeah, I'm very interested to see exactly what that means. It says you've got seven minutes to escape. Um, so yeah, that's probably the length of the attraction itself. Probably a bit of a pre-show before that maybe. Um, but what we can see here from the exterior isn't looking the best. I mean, they two big screens that we've got just there. Uh, along with that, you've got like the purple lighting, which is kind of on the outside of the window just to block them in. Because yeah, this is a big tent that's permanently here in the park. And uh, yeah, they've kind of put the curtains around the side so it's dark inside all the time. But that doesn't really look very promising from what we can see on the exterior there. These boards around the outside of Daz Games are absolutely massive. Look at it. New scare attraction for this year. And yeah, even the branding on there, it's a scare attraction. Doesn't say scare maze or of course escape room. So yeah, it's kind of a hybrid between the two. Really fascinating to see how this is going to end up. Hey, Theme Park Worldwide on YouTube. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, you've got the big gates here. I'm thinking maybe this is going to stay in place and then they're just going to put entrance signage here. Um, but I don't know, it's all guesswork at the moment. See what we can see through this gap. Well, I tell you what, from what I can see here on the exterior, it best look a hell of a lot better on the inside than it does from outside here. Let's have a look around the corner. Just looking through another gap here in the fence, and yeah, you can see there's a neon sign that says leaderboard with an arrow on there as well. I also think another reason why this fence is probably going to stay up is because of how poor the exterior looks. I mean, it would cover up the fact that it's just a marquee with a few festoon lights, wouldn't it really? So yeah, I can definitely see this staying up. However, could be wrong. Maybe this will be the exit over here. Let's see what we can see from this angle. Close to Spinball Wizard. Yeah, I believe the fencing just stops around here, so we'll be able to see around the other side. There we go. What we got there? Shipping container. Some purple lighting, some emergency lighting on the side, some speakers on that side too, and of course a spinning police light up there as well, a red one just on the side. So yeah, I reckon this will be the exit for what we can see down here. Yeah, you've got another container along the back, 
and then some walls kind of blocking in the windows. From the outside, it does look pretty poor. I definitely think we're going to see them keeping that fence in. Is that a mannequin there? Oh, blimey, I think it is. We've got a naked mannequin on the outside. Yeah, I'm not liking the look of what we're seeing from this attraction, but we'll see what happens come Saturday. There's still a few days to go. But yeah, I don't think we're going to see this come down. If we do, I'll be surprised. I think that one will be the entrance and they'll open the gates. This will probably be the exit. Because um, yeah, it does not look the best from outside. But well, there we go, it's new for this year. I think it's fair to say that Scarefest 2023 is going to go one way or the other. It's either going to be really bad or really good. I'm hoping for the latter. I want this to be a fantastic event again. It used to be one of the best Halloween events in the UK, one of our highlights in the year, and these past few years, it's really crept down. However, we have got some new things this year. Burial grounds, from what I've seen today, looks great. I like the look of the setup. Uh, I like the fact it's included in the cost as well, and it'll add more to the park atmosphere. Along with that, it is nice to see a new attraction coming in. We can't fully judge Dad's Games Panic until we've done it, of course. Based on the exterior, it looks really cheap and tacky, so I hope that the interior is completely different to that. Uh, I really do hope so. I mean, these scare mazes often don't look the best on the outside, uh, but a good inside, unless it's the invitation anyway. Uh, let's see what that's going to be like this year. Uh, that's the one that looked better on the outside than it was inside. And of course, it isn't a scare maze, it's an audio experience, uh, but let's hope for some changes because that was pretty terrible last year. Uh, and then along with that, of course, we've got the return of the other scare attractions with the attic um, along with that Altonville mine tours with some changes which I am looking forward to seeing just how new for 2023 it actually is and then of course Darkest Depths as well all of them great attractions that have just been here for so long we wanted a big refresh it's not quite what we were hoping for this year but uh, there is some new things to enjoy and we'll fully review it and uh, judge it all on Saturday and see what it's going to be like but fair play though the Alton Towers Entertainment team they do a lot of work this week uh, changing it over from Oktoberfest into Scarefest so I hope that the rest of the week goes well for you all and uh, we look forward to seeing what Saturday um, is going to be like. And fingers crossed um, for a good event this year. Let us know your thoughts down below in the video comments. If you're going to be here over the weekend, of course, say hello to us if you see us. And uh, yeah, along with that, our vlog will be coming up on Sunday and we'll have updates throughout our social media pages. So give us a follow throughout Saturday here from the events. But that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there, keep on riding. See you in the next video.